Hi, welcome to Fish. First, I see Kim, and my name is Linda. So, I talked about the other week uh, my Bible study group, and it was a very vigorous Bible study group. Um, yours truly um, needs to learn how to be maybe more quiet. Anyway, we were on the subject of the Holy Spirit, and one question was, you know, are Jesus and the Holy Spirit the same? And I explained that in my other video. But then I went on to say that it's blasphemy of what the teaching was in that video. So I think it's a really good idea to, you know, I, for me anyway, I had just like one definition of blasphemy. And when you speak about the Holy Spirit and blasphemy, that is, a, I don't even like to say this, but I mean, this is just the unpardonable sin. And it's in the Bible that whoever commits blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, it is, you're done. You are done. It's not, it, it's non-negotiable. There's no compromise. It's, it's a done deal. And so that's why I brought it up in the Bible study. It, it, it made for a lively Bible study. I'll just leave it at that. So today is what is blasphemy, okay? I really want to understand for me, anyway, what exactly is blasphemy? I mean, I felt like it was very one-dimensional, my, my definition. And, and then as I got to reading, I realized it's, it's a little bit more. So what is blasphemy? So we know to blasphemy is to speak with contempt about God, right? Or to be defiantly irreverent to God. I mean, blasphemy is verbal or written reproach of God's name, his character, work, or attributes, okay? So it's the whole spectrum of God. And blasphemy, it is, just what I was saying a minute ago, a serious crime in the law God gave to Moses. Now, the Israelites we're to worship and obey God, right? We all know that. So in Leviticus 24, 10, 16, a man blasphemed the name of God. And to the Hebrews at that time, a name wasn't just kind of like a convenient thing. It really wasn't. It was a symbolic representation of a person's character. It was very very important back then. Not like today. Today it's a whole different meaning. But back then, it was extremely important. It was about the family. It was about um, the child, the, the, it, your whole identity. So the man in Leviticus who blasphemed God's name was stoned to death. Now in Isaiah 36, it tells the story of Sennacherib. I, I cannot pronounce these names. You know, I practiced before, and then I get up here, and I was like, and then, then, then. Anyway, just bear with me. I'm going to call him king, because he was the king of Assyria. And his attempt to demoralize Jerusalem before he attacked, okay, in his attempt, excuse me, after pointing out Assyria's many victories, um, he says, who of all the gods of these countries have been able to save their lands from me? How then can the Lord deliver Jerusalem from my hand? Yeah, I mean, he was really going for it, wasn't he? Isaiah 36, 20. So the king, whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce again, committed blasphemy by assuming Israel's God was equal to the false gods of the surrounding nations. Big mistake. So the king of Judah, Hezekiah, I got that one, points out this blasphemy in his prayer to God, in which he asks God to deliver them for the purpose of defending his own honor. Isaiah 37, 4 and 17. And that's exactly what God did. Isaiah 37, 36 to 37. It explains it right in there. Then the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all 
dead bodies. Okay, this is like amazing. So the king of Assyria, whose name I'm not going to pronounce, broke camp and withdrew. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. And later the king was murdered in the temple of his god, Nisroch. <laughs> Isaiah 37, 38. Whoops. So followers of God, us believers, right, are also responsible to make sure their behavior doesn't incite others to blaspheming God. So in Romans 2, 7, 24, Paul, the Apostle Paul, scolds those who claim to be saved through the law and yet still live in sin. Using Isaiah 52, 5, Paul tells them, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, verse 24. And in 1 Timothy 1.20, Paul explains that he had abandoned two false teachers to Satan, to Satan, okay? So they would be taught not to blasphemy. That's pretty intense. Um, so thus, false doctrine and leading God's people astray is also, guess what? A form of blasphemy. It is. We are not to mislead the flock. Okay. Jesus spoke of a special type of blasphemy. Blasphemy, here we go, against the Holy Spirit. This is the real serious one. It's committed by then and even now, but we're talking about then, by the religious leaders of his day. Now, the situation was that the Pharisees were eyewitnesses, first-hand eyewitnesses to Jesus' miracles. But they attributed the work of the Holy Spirit to the presence of a demon. So that is in Mark 3, 30 Their portrayal of the holy as demonic was deliberate, insulting, rejection of God, and guess what? It was unforgivable. It was absolutely unforgivable. And the most significant accusation of blasphemy was one that happened to be completely false. It was for the crime of blasphemy that the priests and Pharisees condemned Jesus. Matthew 26, 65. No wonder he called them hypocrites, right? They understood that Jesus was claiming to be God. That would indeed be a reproach of God's character but if it wasn't true, if it wasn't true, if Jesus was just a man claiming to be God, he would have been a blasphemer. However, however, as the second person of the Trinity, Jesus could truthfully claim deity. Philippians 2, 6. So, the fact is, every time we do, or say something that gives others a false representation of the glory, holiness, and authority, and character of God, we commit blasphemy. Yes, we do. Every time we misre misrepresent our position as children of God, we are damaging his reputation. Now, fortunately, fortunately, Jesus forgives even the sin of blasphemy. Now, I know I said earlier that it isn't, but hang on. Peter attacked Jesus's purpose, Matthew 16, 22. Paul tried to make others blasphemy, Acts 26, 9, 18, and Jesus's own brothers thought he was insane, Mark 3, 21 and all repented and all were forgiven. I hope that makes sense. <sighs> well, that's it for fish. First I see Kim, my name is Linda, and until next time.